Hello, Mary C. Williams friends. This is Miss Britt here. I am going to talk to you today about a writer's notebook. And I'll just pull my screen up so you can see those words. We're gonna be talking about what is a writer's notebook and I'm gonna be showing you an example. So I'll go ahead and read that first part. It says, a writer's notebook is a special place to collect the stories of our lives. Writers use a notebook to write down thoughts, ideas, plans, memories, images, questions, answers, and anything else that they can think of. There are so many possibilities. So I'm gonna start by sharing a little bit of this text with you. So this text is, this, this is just like caution tape, like leave it alone, don't touch it. Caution, Amelia Writes Again by Marissa Moss, except for the words and pictures by Amelia. Well, of course, this is not Amelia's real writer's notebook, but this author, Marissa Moss, created this example so that children can see what a writer's notebook might would look like. So I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna share some examples. So that's just the credits page. So right here, this is an example of what you could do to start out your writer's notebook. This is my beautiful new blank notebook waiting for me to fill out the words and drawings, but I feel as blank and empty as these pages. I mean, I just turned 10 exciting years old, but I feel exactly the same as I did when I was nine, and I look the same. And then this, this author put a picture of Amelia in here, and it says, Amelia, me. So some things that you can put in your writer's notebook, you could talk about things, but then you can insert drawings like, this is Amelia, this is me. There's a scar right there and it says the same old scar from when Cleo threw a toy teapot at me. And same brain, same ideas and these little arrows. So this is, you're gonna be starting your writer's notebook technically tomorrow. I'm just introducing the thought of it. So you're gonna be starting your writer's notebook tomorrow. And these, and some examples of things that you can put in it, I'm gonna show you from this. So I love how your writer's notebook does not have to be perfect. It can be a little bit messy, you know, writing on the side like this, some arrows pointing, and then some pictures and explaining what's in the picture. Those are all things that you can put in your writer's notebook. Now, this is a page where Amelia went to Space World. And so she took a postcard, it tells me what it is. This is a postcard from the gift shop. She took a souvenir, she took something from her trip to Space World and she put it in her writer's notebook. She also put the ticket from where she went, so she taped that in. She also had a souvenir stamped penny from Space World, so she put a penny in and got a souvenir stamp. And so she explains what is on this page with her writing, but you can add pictures, you can add postcards, you can add small little tokens like that. Just remember, if you put anything heavy in your writer's notebook and tape it down, that it might actually cause your writer's notebook to kind of fold over. So I wouldn't put anything too heavy. Now, Marissa, I mean, not Marissa, but Amelia got a paint set. So she got a new paint set. And with this new paint set, she did some, um, she has a, a, a birthday card from Nadia that she drew herself and a birthday card from Leah. But then this is a, the ribbon from Nadia's present. So maybe someone gave you something that you wanna put in here. Or if you had your own paint set, you could draw something or paint something and then you could stick it in your writer's notebook. You'd wanna be very careful not to actually paint inside of your writer's notebook because it might mess up some of your other writing. But you can always do something separately and tape it in. So there's some more examples. Now let's read a little bit of what she has written. It was Cleo. She said, now I could write something nice about her for a change. But if you have to write good stuff about me, ah, oh, so she got this present and she's like, now you have to write good stuff about me. Okay, thanks. She didn't say everything I wrote about her had to be nice, just something. Here goes. Cleo does have one good thing about her, her hands. She has long, elegant fingers, and she doesn't chew on her fingernails the way that I do. So this, this um, Amelia is writing, and she's just writing her thoughts. 
Your writer's notebook can be anything you want it to be. It can be things that you're writing about, things that you're happy that you got to do. You know, you got a present from somebody or a birthday card from somebody. You can write about these things and put them in your writer's notebook. Now, occasionally, your teachers are going to ask you to write specific things in your writer's notebook. So you don't always get to do what's called free write, but this week you're going to get to do three free writes. You're gonna do your first one on Tuesday, and then you're going to get to do your um, second and third on Thursday and Friday. So you will have three entries in your writer's notebook by the end of the week. And we're gonna talk to you about what you're going to use for a writer's notebook. I'll talk to you briefly for just a second. Now we gave everybody one notebook when you guys came um, to pick up your red bags. We gave you one notebook and you can use your notebook, but the only way that this is going to be very easy for you is if you have an iPad. If you don't have an iPad and you're using a computer, we're gonna show you how to start your own writer's notebook on the computer using Google Docs, okay? If you have an iPad though, it's very easy to take a picture and upload a picture from something that you have written by hand, but you still have the option. We're gonna show you how to start one on an iPad too. You have the option to make it as a Google Doc, but you're going to have to share some of your writing entries with us and we're gonna be asking you to do that on Google Docs. So you might just wanna create one on Google Docs, completely up to you, or you can do one on paper and pencil, which is totally cool too. But remember, we're gonna be asking to see these examples. So you're going to have to be able to take a picture and upload a picture onto your Google Classroom whenever we ask you to see your work. All right, so I'll do a couple more pages. Let's try this one. I keep trying to start my math homework, but I always get distracted by my hand that's doing the writing, and then I get distracted by the numbers. Numbers each have their own personalities. Five, it's hard to be an odd number, is sharp and cranky. Four, is friendly and patient. I am even tempered. Three, is jolly but lazy and never wants to budge. So do, do numbers really have these feelings? No, this little girl is just using her imagination and putting things in her writer's notebook. So I think she's doing pretty good. Um, over here, we've got some different stamps that have different numbers on them. So she's just using some numbers that she has found on some stamps. And then here are some more stamps up here. So this is just an example. I'll turn a couple more pages so you can see. Ah, okay. Looks like we might be doing something here. I do not suggest putting marshmallows in your writer's notebook. It will get sticky and dry out. Keep going. She's got some food stuff in here. Caution. I thought yesterday was bad, but now a horrible, awful thing has happened. Much, much worse than any fight with Leah. There is a big fire at our schools, at our school last night. And the fire department says it was arson. That means someone set it on purpose. So if there are big events that are happening in your life, such as COVID-19 and having to learn virtually, then you may want to share some of those thoughts and feelings in your writer's notebook. All right, so I'm gonna show you some other things that you can have in your writer's notebook. Let me turn this up. All right, perfect. All right, and get this out of the way. So I read this to you already, you know some things, but I'm gonna give you a few more ideas that you could include. You can include things that are important to you or things you care deeply about in your writer's notebook. You can put stories or adventures that really happened. So things, that your stories that really happened. You can also put important people, special places, or you could talk about your pets. You can add your drawings and your sketches, or you can make a diagram of something, like maybe you wanna share um, your bedroom, like the way it's set up, or maybe um, a place that you've been in the past and you wanna make a diagram of it. 
You can write your own songs or your own poems, which is something I definitely did as a kid. You can um, write some observations, so some things that you notice or some things that you have seen before. You can write from a photograph, so you can put a picture in there and then you can write some information about that photograph. You can talk about some important first, so some things that happen in your life for first, like first day of school, first time you went to a specific camp, the first time you rode a bike or had a sleepover. You can talk about good times or bad times. You can talk about celebrations, either big celebrations or small ones. You can make lists. Maybe you have a list of things you want to get accomplished for that week. You can write that on Monday. Maybe you have some dreams that you want to be able to share with somebody. You can write those in there. Your memories and conversations or quotes. A writer's notebook is like a ditch, an empty space that you dig in your busy life, a space that will fill up with all sorts of fascinating little creatures. You'll be amazed by what you catch there. So that's just a quote, sorry. I should explain that. That is just a quote by Ralph Fletcher, and he is one of the authors that has written um, another book that we might get a chance to look at. That is this book, A Writer's Notebook, so we might get around to using that one as well. If you are writing and you're having a hard time writing, so when you are writing in your writer's notebook and you have thought about some of these things that you can include in your writer's notebook, Sometimes as teachers, we find that students just write a sentence or two in their writer's notebook. And we're not looking for a small little bit of writing. We want you to learn how to be a good writer and write for an extended period of time. So one or two sentences is not going to be enough in your writer's notebook. You're going to want to put at least five good sentences, but I would be shooting, you know, five to 10 good sentences to share your thoughts. And so when you're writing, if you're having a hard time adding details, you want to start thinking about ways to help us imagine what you are writing. So you would try to remember the colors and be specific, maybe some sounds, if it has something to do with sounds or some smells, what was the day like, or, you know, how were your feelings about that day or whatever. It depends on what your topic is, but you want to make sure that you are adding details who was there, um, only if they're important to your story. You don't want to just tell me that, you don't want to list everybody who was there just to make your paper longer. You want to be specific and make sure that you're only talking about people that are actually important to the story. Where was it? Where did it happen? Can you describe the setting? What feelings or thoughts could you add to give your readers a deeper insight into your, now this says memoir, so it could be your memory if you're writing something from memory. And then can you use a metaphor to bring a description to life? We're going to talk more about metaphors, but you don't have to try to use a metaphor right now unless you know exactly what a metaphor is. So I want you to focus on making sure that you use your five senses when you're writing. So your five senses include your sense of smell. So if you can remember any smells from a specific day or something that was going on, your sense of sound with your hearing, your sense of sight, the things that you can see. If you can include things about the sense of taste. And then lastly, your sense of touch. So basically what you need to make sure that you are doing is adding as much detail as possible so that your readers can um, understand one, what you're saying and that they can enjoy it because you're using descriptive language and being specific. So those are some things I want you to think about. Today, you are going to go to your Google Classroom. You are going to complete day 11, what goes in a writer's notebook. I shared with you some things that are in Amelia's. So after watching Miss Britt's video, what are three things that you saw Amelia share in her writer's notebook? You're going to tell me the three things that Amelia, three things. I showed you a lot more than three, but you're just going to tell me three things that Amelia shared in her writer's notebook. I need to add this in here. Please use complete sentences. Please use complete sentences. Okay. And then last but not least, what can I put in my writer's notebook? I want you to tell me at least three things in complete sentences that you can put in your writer's notebook. All right, my friends.
I hope that this video is helpful and I hope that you are excited to start using your writer's notebook. Tomorrow, Miss Caldwell is going to explain to you how to create a electronic writer's notebook because it will be a document that you will have to create and keep up with. And then when we ask you to provide us with your latest writing entry, you're going to want to be able to either take a picture of it and upload it, or you're going to want to be able to quickly copy something like I'm doing right now. So if you go up to something and you highlight it, you can um, use two fingers to click and you're going to hit copy. Or if you're using a mouse, you're going to use um, the right button. You're going to hit copy. And then you find, you go to the document and you would put paste. You would hit right click, paste. And if I do it again, it's going to show up again. And then it's going to show up. You don't need the directions twice. I was just showing you that, that you'll be able to do that. And it will be easier for you to share your writing entries with us if you have it electronically. Just a thought. I want you to have one on paper pencil if that's what you like, but you have to be able to take a picture of it to upload it for us to read it. And you have to be using your neatest handwriting so that we can actually read what you have written. All right, my friends, I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.